Hey guys, this is Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Today I'm going to show you how to make some caves out of flower pots. So we're going to take a normal flower pot and we're going to show you how to drill a hole into it and we're going to attach some plants to it and things like that. Stay tuned. Here we've got some caves. Uh, this is a cichlid stone cave, something like that. They're you know, anywhere from six to fifteen dollars depending on size, stuff like that. This is a cobalt cichlid cave. Um, you can buy them at a lot of independent retailers and probably online too. And these are probably eight bucks or something like that, I don't know, ten, something. Uh, and then we have a flower pot. You know, you can just put it in an aquarium and have a big opening like that. Uh, but Typically for pistos and things like that, they want a smaller hole, and uh, so we're going to show you how to do that. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is soak your pots overnight in a bucket, get them real wet. Uh, that's going to make the, the terracotta or the clay easier to drill. Uh, next, you're going to need a hole saw, and I own a kit, so I can choose lots of different sizes. You can see here. I've actually done one of this size and made a pretty large hole and that's what uh, is over here in the fish room uh, for this cave right here. You can see how that one you know, went right through, it was easy. So uh, this time we're going to do, do a real small one and uh, I'm going to show you what that process is like and then we're going to use some super glue gel which you've probably seen in another video and we're going to attach some plants. Yeah I've got some Piece of philandra and some anubias that we're going to attach. So we're going to make two of these today. All right, so I've chosen my hole saw I want to use. Got my cordless drill here. This is one and one eighth. And what you really want to make this easy is you want the drill bit to be inside of here. It's the pilot bit. You can get them that don't have that, but it's really going to want to jump around as you're trying to get the hole started on here. It's going to want to move around a lot. Uh, so the other thing I recommend is having a bucket of water like this because this bit will get hot and it'll actually start creating steam if we don't keep it cool. It's like drilling glass or anything like that. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to pick a spot on here and then I'm going to drill it. And I'm going to you know, I've got the, the tripod here and the camera, kind of a weird angle. Uh, this will be much harder to do showing on a camera than it would be uh, without having to work with equipment. So uh, ch whatever you see here, it's going to be easier for you to do. Uh, but we're basically, we've got the water level just so it comes up to the rim of this, uh, this pot here. And so this water is going to cool uh, the bit as we drill. It's going to help carry away some of the the terracotta that we're cutting away and we're just going to get started here so we're going to get the pilot bit going and I'm going to hold it here and so we're drilling I would say go at a slow pace definitely while you're getting the pilot bit through it we don't want to crack it and uh, we also don't want to jump around and make it look bad. So I'll stop here and show you what we've done so far and kind of clean it up. So, so far, all there is is a little notch here. Alright, so we've made it through and you can see there the first layer kind of dug in and what's going to happen is when you're drilling it's always going to basically drill heavier on one side than the other because this pot is tapered and so it's our job to kind of even that out as we start going through it so once I kind of get this line in I'm going to rock it to the other side so it cuts on this side and then we're pretty locked in and it should go relatively quick um, but back in the water it goes we attach the, uh, the little drill bit to it and actually it's getting low enough that this could be a problem so I might have to do it out of water for the video and uh, just use a shorter tub you know next time I'm doing it but you can really hear the grinding now that we're grinding it all the way around and you can watch it um, you know grind it through and we definitely want to just keep it keep it nice and wet 
you know, it's the kind of drilling through tile almost. We, you know, we definitely want to use lots of water. And if you if you see any steam or anything like that, the bit's getting way too hot, and you don't want that. So this is just a slow and steady process. You know, we'll give you a look from what's going on on the inside here. Um, so you can see the pilot bit is through it, you know, and we're just gonna, it's a slow grind through, it's not a race, um, but being that it's wet, it does grind through pretty quick, and uh, yeah, so it's, it's a slow and steady, shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes uh, at most from start to finish, but... So when you keep getting it wet, you're clearing out what you've ground out, basically. So you can see here, we are now, let me get it angled right for the camera here, hopefully. You can see my hand through it, and you can see on the top part here, we've actually come all the way through. We're through up here, but we're not up down, not on the bottom or, you know, the top, whatever way you're looking at it. So when we're drilling it, we're going to apply more pressure to this side than this side. Otherwise, it's going to want to crack out, and we would rather cut our way through it than uh, break our way through it. So back in it goes, and now we're just gonna we're gonna lean heavier towards the side that hasn't cut through yet. And even though we're almost through, we still want to get it wet. And just like that, we're through. Let's set the drill down here. Clean up our hole. Yeah, so we have a pretty nice hole here. Uh, I would say if I wasn't having to do it on a camera, it would be a, even a nicer hole, but it's not sharp by any means. That's the nice thing, so we ground our way through easily. Um, so we shouldn't have any problem. Nice size hole for maybe a Pistos or uh, some smaller Africans, that type of thing. Uh, Plecos can use this as well. But now we want to do the second part of our of our project here, and you know, we don't need the the water that we've made anymore. Uh, we're going to attach plant. So let me grab that. All right. So I'm going to attach. I'll do this this uh, this pot of Anubius barteri because that's what I've got right here. Take it out of the pot. This one's been neglected in a tank, a breeder tank for a long time, but it'll get a better life now that it's going to be attached to a pot and a little closer to light, not neglected. So we're pulling all the rock wool off. You know, it's kind of a refresher if you've watched the, the video on how to do this. Uh, the goal is to get all this excess stuff off so that we can get the roots or the rhizome actually is what we really want uh, and attach that. Takes you know a little bit of time here. Now, if you have scissors, you can cut the roots down. Roots are kind of long on this one, so I'm just gonna kind of pull them off here. And these will just grow back, but it makes it easier to attach without all the roots in the way. Let's see. Let me clean my hand here. So now we've got very short roots. You know, for the size of plant it is. And uh, we're going to dry it off with this towel. I'm also going to dry, I'm going to attach to the top of this, top of this pot here. And some of the nice thing is, a lot of these pots already come with a hole. And some species will like it with some light coming in, some don't. Uh, the other thing is you can kind of glue a plant on here and get it so the roots want to go down in there so then eventually you've kind of got all these roots coming down so when the fish go in they feel a lot safer because there's roots in here and it's like it's a real nice hide for them 
Uh, but yeah, so we've got this dry and this dry. Super glue gel. We want to use gel, not just regular super glue because it's too watery. We want to use the actual gel. And uh, we're just going to put some on our pot here. Yeah, so there's a lot of glue right there. I mean, not crazy amount, but definitely if it was normal super glue, it would be too watery. All right, so that's that. Now my goal is to make it stay in there. I'm gonna try and put some of this into the hole. So that it will grow. And then the rest of it, just hold it. So all we gotta do is hold it against the glue there. And if we look at it here, it's kind of leaning to the side. It's gonna train itself to stand up uh, once once it's uh, orientated with some light on it after you know a week or two, because uh, this was in a in the basket, it was laying over in the tank, and so it was you know orientated this way, you know. So this pot, as we put it on here, same orientation, it will right itself. And the glue still wet. Um, but it's already holding and you use something besides your finger to kind of make sure you've got a good good handle on that but while that's drying we can do the next one so it's been about five minutes now I just put the cave in the glue is dried uh, so this is a, these are some Epistogramma Panduro uh, I got them from Ted Judy I've also got some of these in the store um, but yeah, she's already checked it out a couple of times. And you know, they've already built this one up and haven't laid eggs yet, but I'm hoping it'll take to you one of these ones that have plants and stuff on it. And uh yeah, here she comes when she come visit it. I never like it when I'm videoing them, they prefer the privacy obviously. And then we've got the one where we placed Buse right here. This has got uh, Claro Plecos, LD808, the dwarf bristle nose. And uh, yeah, so I'm hoping they're going to use that cave as well. And uh, I wish I had some well established ones, but since I'm setting up the new fish room, I don't. But these caves do look quite well, or quite good, when they're covered in plants. So uh, they don't look nearly as stark as they do right now, but they are great for a breeding room or a fish room and they're super easy and down and dirty. So, you know, you can get them done quick. But yeah, till next time, uh, you know, leave any comments of stuff you guys wanna see. Otherwise, I'll just keep filming what I'm doing for my fish room. Off she goes.